Yeah, so nobody say my chance win. Um, uh, what, just what I said to the team after the game. I said, um, my, my wife gets told me all the time about this, but I sweat <laughs> just without any reason at all. And uh, tonight they gave me even more of a reason to sweat. Uh, all pitch, you know, really, really gets going. Uh, but um, like I told those guys, this was uh, still a learning uh, moment here. And sometimes it's really it's better to win and learn uh, than it is to lose uh, at the end of the day. But um, I did like the grit um, to continue to keep playing and uh, come out with uh, the win. Um, so excited by that and um, just to be a, you know, actually a, a, a team effort. So happy. What was the biggest thing you you know you took from this? Was it, you mentioned just the grit to keep playing? Was it was it that or? Making shots down the, the stretch, or what, what was the things that you, that you can really draw the, the biggest positives from drawing from this? Um, well, the, the first thing, like I was uh, uh, challenging, was uh, Alan Hunt um, in the sense of being more assertive. Uh, for him and HD to be out on the floor at the same time, you know, he just can't come away from games only taking eight shots. Um, I think he has to be uh, a double digit shooter. Along with H uh, and JJ, you know those guys. Um, I thought him being assertive tonight helps us long term. Um, if I'm a, a, a team getting ready for us, you know, yes, uh, Hayden Dalton can go off and get 30 plus. Justin James can go get 30 plus. Um, Herndon, yeah, he's gonna have a solid day, you know, at, at 12 you know, or eight or 10. But for him to go out there and get 32 helps us going forward because it's in them and it, it allows us to uh, stretch the defense even more. And uh, like I was telling the radio crew out there, you know, yeah, we're going to run into some teams that take advantage of us a little bit in the post because of the phys physicality, but that's how we have to take advantage of them uh, on the end with our skill set uh, between uh, H and Al and our ability to make shots. How do you feel the defense came out after the DU game? Did you like how they played? Or? I thought our energy was tremendous to start the game. Um, uh, we, we had, we, we called them kills. We started off with, I think, a couple kills to start and we built like, I think, a 10 point lead. But the part of growth, again, is, is not getting comfortable uh, when you do take a lead. And I thought we had some of that tonight. Um, and I thought actually down the stretch, uh, uh, especially in, in the second uh, overtime, I thought we were really good. Um, but throughout the game, I thought we made some mental mistakes. Uh, on the uh, defensive end of the floor um, when we were in our uh, zone defense and rotated to uh, a non-shooter uh, to allow a shooter uh, to take the shot. And in most cases, you're saying let the non-shooter beat you than the guy that's shooting 50 something percent you know, from the three-point line. So we had some mental mistakes here and there, but again, learnable, teachable, um, and, and really good to be able to teach it after a win. You talked about your skill set. What does it say about <coughs> Big time guys to step up three double doubles between Al HD and JJ. Uh, well, again, I mean those three, and I know Alex didn't really have a good night, but just from a veteran guy, he actually him and Lou. Um, but those three, um, for us, should be consistently doing things of that nature. Um, now the the number of points can fluctuate between the three of them, but to be able to go out there and those three play well. You know, we got a chance to win, you know. And then what it does, again, allows the other guys opportunities because of what they're doing. Um, so if you're spacing the floor, it gives Lou an opportunity to put the ball on the floor and drive it now because guys are so nervous about the three-point shot. Uh, and it spaces the floor with Alex, you know. I mean, he got off nine of them. Uh, I don't expect too many times that he's going to go one for whatever uh, from the three-point line. But um, those three guys have to be – uh, good for us, for us to be successful long term. You, know, you talked for a while about wanting Al to be a little more aggressive on offense. Did you know that the ceiling was you know that high? I don't think he'd ever had 20 points before tonight. <coughs> that's 32. Well, again, I, it, it's been a long drawn out process with him. You know, because the, the skill set has always been there. The assertiveness is just hasn't. Um, but. You know, again, sometimes as a coach, I mean, I just called him out, you know, um, because I just expected more. Um, and I, 
I could care less about this game. I'm thinking long term for our success as a team that he's going to have to be able to be. Again, I don't care about the makes and the misses, but he has to be willing to attempt it. And when he's willing to attempt it, 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 it allows everything else to open up. You know, again, the assertive by HD is great. Assertive by JJ is great. Actually, the assertive by Lou is great. Al just needed to be more assertive. And this was a, a, a good opportunity for him tonight. Um, I'm glad that it happened in a successful way because now he understands it's capable. He can do it. Um, now, the, the, the drawback with him is he'll do that and then revert mm -hmm. back. So it's our job as a staff to continue to challenge him to be assertive. Again, like I always tell him, I tell like I, I don't care about the mix and the misses. I care about it being right. You know, the, is that a good shot? You know, I don't care about it if it goes in or not. Is that what we're looking for as a team? And for him, he has to be assertive for us to be uh, good long term. You mentioned, you know, you, you said you talked about being assertive with him for a while, but you said you called him out to do it was it before this game? Was it during the after film? After film uh, of the Denver game. After the Denver game. After the Denver game. Uh, well, to be honest, which a lot of people got called out. He just happened to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he got called out because of you know most most time you call people out because of your defense. I called him out because of his offense. You know we needed him to be a certain one offensive end of the floor. Um, like you can even look at the stat line against Denver. I mean he had a solid game, but that wasn't enough you know for us to be successful. Um, but you know, and everybody else pretty much got called out on defense. So, <laughs> so, so it, it, it was equal now. Everybody got a little bit. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. Nobody special. You know, everybody gets. It. Coach on free throws tonight. I think twelve misses just was just a rough night. Or what? What has to change going forward? Well, I blame myself. Actually, I told the staff we're not shooting enough free throws in practice. You know, you know. So you, you try to crunch so much stuff into practice, and sometimes you forget some things. And I think by the wayside free throws, because I like I'm a very optimistic guy. I just think we're a good shooting basketball team, and I think we're a good free throw shooting team. Like Lou is a 79, 80 percent free throw shooter, and he doesn't he didn't shoot it well. And my eyes right at 66, six, but you know still climbing. Uh, but we got to find some time uh, within practice uh, to get up to the free throws. Which didn't see much of, of Redding other than he started the game and then. You know, not that Cody didn't play well, but was that more of a coach's decision not to play him much, or was he hurt, or what was going on there? Uh, something happened at half. Um, something for some well, something happened at half that he, he couldn't. He was doing something with uh, Doctor the trainers. I don't even think he was out there on the floor when the game started the second half. So he went to Cody, and uh, I don't even know if uh, Lance ever came and said something in my ear about he was ready to go. I just thought from that point, to be honest with you, I thought Cody was playing well. Uh, and what I tell our guys at the end of the day, again, you know, I'm a coach that coached my field. You know, if a guy's playing well, what, what, what's the reason to take him out? Unless he's tired. And I didn't think he got tired. I thought it was enough timeouts uh, in between, and he just kept playing. But you're not sure what, what the extent I is? Haven't heard, I haven't heard if, uh, what else is going on. So, I mean, I, I don't think it's any, it wasn't anything serious. Sure. But it was just something that they needed to look at. Coach, going forward, would, you know, obviously a pretty big game at you know, Final Four team, just how do you build on this one today? I'm sorry, sir. Just how do you kind of build on this win going into that one? Um, well, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, was, you know, human nature is, is South Carolina. Like, I don't know if I have to say too many words for our guys to be ready. Like, they're playing in South Carolina. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, but at the same time, I think there's an excitement level, you know, for our guys traveling uh, and looking at it as an opportunity. Like I told them, I uh, expressed the relationship between their staff and our staff, and I said no different. You know, they're probably thinking the same way. You know, it's family, it's friends, but when the ball goes up, we're enemies. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, and then when the game over, you become friends again and family again. You know, I don't know if you can say family again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>